Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Real Talk Podcast. I am your host for today's episode, Braden Becker, and uh, today I'm joined by Ben Kincaid, Braden Walser, Cole Thompson, and Luke Melby. Yeah, we've got uh, Cole uh, from our CTC class on as a special guest today. Cole, you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, I'm in the CTC class, as he already said, and I am mainly interested in cinematography, and that's what I want to go to school for. And um, everyone in this room are kind of my boys, but so I'm just joining in today because I thought it'd be interesting to see what these guys have been doing because I've been listening to the podcast a little bit myself, so I thought I'd join in. Yeah, first special guest. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming on. Uh, so do we want to get get started with some recommendations yeah, of the week. Uh, does anybody particularly uh, want to start, or should I go first? You can go first. All right. So my recommendation for this week is uh, Tombstone. It's a movie. It's a western. Uh, it stars Kurt Russell as Wyatt Earp, who's like a r- retired bounty hunter lawman, yeah. and they just kind of clean up the the streets of Tombstone. The shootout at the OK Corral. It's a true story. Um, yeah, it was really good. I watched it over two days. My dad actually recommended it to me a while ago, but since we're making a Western for our next project, I figured I should go binge a couple of them. So, yeah, that's mine. Uh, mine is a show on Netflix called The Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, I I love I love that show. It's basically like that The Seven so Deadly good. Sins, like... As like the like greed, greed, wrath, uh, I'm about to envy, look this up. all them, uh, basically as characters, and they're like kind of like medieval, like with super like powers essentially. And, and it is an this, anime. It's, it yeah, is it is an anime, anime. So <laughs> but it is very part. good. But anime, is, it's not like the usual anime. Yeah, I don't think. Not, it's, and the thing about anime is that it's not something that really people look down on from the start, but when you actually, like, take a chance on it, like, I, I myself was very, like... Skeptical? Yeah, so and yeah. also, like, against it, because I thought it was, like, super dumb, and I was like, this is just, like, Japanese cartoons that adults watch. Like, how lame, <laughs> yeah. how lame do you have to be to watch this? And then my friend showed me an episode, or, like, about three episodes of the show called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure on Netflix. Is that, is that the, the one? one? That's the one everybody that's talks about, right? That's the first, about, right? first really? one that I watched. Wow. And so, and that is what really got me into the whole scene of it, and so now I'm watching My Hero Academia, my and I've started really Seven Deadly Sins, and I, yes. I'm JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I'm still going on that. And so all of those are kind of like, it's like a snowball effect, and you just like, oh, yeah. Of, yeah, you, 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 you get like, like addicted you, to it. Yeah, exactly. It. It's hard just, to stop watching. You just can't stop. Because it is actually very interesting. So, yeah, that's just my influence. Yeah, that, and the animation in the show is really like different from other like original animes that you see. Yeah. So it's really mm-hmm. just smooth and nice. I like it a lot. When like memes and stuff say something about JoJo, is that what they're referencing? Usually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense now. Um all right, so my recommendation for this week is gonna be Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> oh, I love uh, that movie. <laughs> I haven't that seen movie that so good. It's, ever, dude. It's it's a pretty funny movie. I've seen it like multiple <laughs> times. Basically I don't, it's like a medieval movie. It's it's very like joke joke based. Like it's very a uh, space balls type of movie where it's just like it's like slapstick but not. Yeah, and uh, and so it follows like a couple of, uh, different stories of the how they had to get the knights of the round table together and then like like things that they fought and stuff. And it's just really funny. Yeah, but I would like, definitely recommend watching it. It's a pretty old movie, but it's it's so good. It's like slapstick comedy kind of mm-hmm. type of feel vibe. It's really nice. Definitely. Uh, so my recommendation, I would say, is Ozark on Netflix. Um, it has I've Jason heard of that. Batterman as Marty Bird, and he's kind of a financial advisor in um, Chicago, but he ends up getting involved with uh, a lot of meth heads and drug dealers and cartels from Mexico, and he actually launders money for them and gets involved with the wrong types of people. So he's forced to move up to the Ozarks, which are in Michigan, I believe, and. Um, and is trying to launder money um, through smaller businesses, and he has to launder five hundred million dollars in one year, or Jesus. else, or Dang. else, his, or else, him and his entire family will be killed. That is so, a lot of money. That and I've only watched a couple episodes of it, but it's extremely, extremely interesting. And I wouldn't have expected Jason Batterman to like be able to play a part like that because I've only really seen him mm-hmm. like like childish movies mm-hmm. and like not yeah. really like great acting scenes. But he's actually playing the part extremely well. He's in Arrested so, Development, right? Yeah, he is. Hmm. So, um, yeah, so I would definitely recommend watching that. It's a really good show, and it has a lot of suspense. Um, So, yeah, definitely watch that. 
So my recommendation for the week is going to be the the Evil Dead. Evil Dead 2. Oh my god. And Army of Darkness. Every time. It's okay, Evil no, Dead. no, 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 no. Yeah, you did this last, last week. That was the last week was Army of Darkness. But this this time I'm going to do Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 because they're completely different movies from Army of Darkness. Uh-huh. So, <clears throat> Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 are kind of hard to explain. So, the first Evil Dead, it's like your stereotypical cabin in the wood movie, except it. It's like it wasn't stereotypical to be a cabin in the woods movie at that time. But so it's a stereotypical cabin in the woods movie. There's something going out to get them and then it's turning them into like monsters or whatever. And they're, you know, fighting their friends and stuff. And it, it's a really fun movie. It, it's mainly meant to be a horror, except with some dark comedy elements. But then the second one. <coughs> Because of copyright issues, they kind of had to retell the first one in like five minutes. But then after that, it continues from where the first one left off. And it's it's a really like funny movie, which is weird. But Sam Raimi, with all his movies, decides to just kind of blend whatever uh, genres come at him. <laughs> and so Evil Dead 2 is a really funny movie. And I think you guys should all watch it. And same with Evil Dead. And also Army of Darkness. Yes, we want to turn the lights off, get some scary stories going for oh, the boys. Let's turn these lights off. Okay, okay I don't no. think it. I don't think it had to be creepy. I don't know if it had no, to be there, creepy in that boy. way, Luke. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was no, I was saying that in like a fun way. That wasn't even me. Uh, that, like, that makes it so much worse. <laughs> All right. So who wants to start us off with the scary stories? Uh, who said they had a real scary story? Was that Michael? Michael. Me, Asian, Asian audio, audio man, man Michael. I believe it was Luke. Luke Asian audio man and Luke. Yeah, they both. Okay. All right. Luke well, Luke's out. sitting at a mic right now, so. Right. So, <clears throat> here is the real story of what my family has dubbed, and I hate this name, the poop ghost. Oh, no. <laughs> Our story starts off in indoor soccer season. Around November time, I believe. So, so I I got home from doing my school work, whatnot. It was a day after school, and I didn't really do my homework because I didn't want to. Uh-huh. And yeah, so my my parents they were going to my brother's indoor soccer game, which is the perfect excuse. Sorry, I have to do my homework, and so. So I ended up doing my homework instead of going to the indoor soccer game, which was kind of awesome. Except for one thing. Ooh. <laughs> no, no. But so I go in, right? I've got my math homework, and I wrote down all the problems. Then I went to go take a nice old dump. As I'm taking this dump, I pull out my pencil, and I start solving the problems. And you know how, like, when you're on your to phone... Be, to be clear, you're you're doing math while you're taking a poop, right? Well, well, no, no, no. In this an is indoor what I was going to explain to you. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. I, I was at my house. Okay. My family went to the indoor soccer arena. You know how when, you, uh, when you're taking a poop and you're on your phone, you finish taking the poop, <laughs> but you're still on your phone? That's what I was doing, <laughs> but with my homework. So that's the state. So you were pooping while you were doing your homework. I had finished pooping. Okay, quick sidebar. My little brother, he'll sneak – he's, like, an extremely avid reader. Like, it, he's either reading or playing Fortnite, and <laughs> he's only allowed to play Fortnite for, like, an hour and a half every day. He'll, he'll take his Calvin and Hobbes books that he's read six times into the bathroom, and he, like, hides them behind the toilet like contraband <laughs> because he's not supposed to have them because it makes him take so long. It's the funniest thing. That's so weird. Because I'll just wa- I'll just walk <laughs> into the bathroom to like go take a whiz or something, and there's just I see Calvin Hobbes looking at me from behind the toilet, and it's like, why is <laughs> that back there? Back like, there. yeah. <laughs> kind of illegal book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am a lover. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Okay. I had to say it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought it was like a moment of silence, so it all like clicked, and we we're like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so, 
So I'm here taking a dump when I just kind of got some bad juju vibes, you know? And I'm chilling here, taking my dump, and it kind of spooked me. So <clears throat> you can't really, like, get up until you've wiped your anus. So I, I started wiping, like, fast. Faster than I've wiped before. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and and I grabbed my... Th this is this is a true story. Like, this isn't a joke story. I grabbed my notebook. I didn't even flush the toilet. I was so, like, terrified. And I don't know what changed in that room, but I was scared. I grabbed my notebook, and I ran out of the bathroom. And then I turned around, and I kind of looked at it, and I held the frame of the door. Kind of like, yeah, I know that you're in here. And then the toilet flushed. And I peed my pants I was so scared. I ran down the stairs and I called my parents and I said, Mom, Dad, somebody flushed the toilet and it wasn't me. And so I was what so a... scared. <laughs> I was so scared that they had to come and pick me up and bring me to the indoor soccer game, which was what I wanted, didn't want to do all along. And that's the story of the poop ghost. So you, okay, so you're doing your math homework mm -hmm. and then you were like, something's weird. So you got up. And you were you weren't you weren't anywhere near the toilet, and that just like flushed. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's... No, no, I'm not kidding. Like this maybe, is a real story. Maybe it's just like a homie ghost trying to like help you. Like, Did you hey, like just finish yeah. going flush, to the dude. bathroom? Like I, I I I took a poop. He's I like, wiped, hey, bro, you forgot to I flush. I threw all the crap in there, and I walked out of the bathroom. I kind of looked at the inside of the bathroom or whatever, uh -huh. and the toilet just flushed. There was. There was no reason for it to. I didn't flush it, like, by... Because I remember I was so scared. I, like, just didn't flush the toilet. Because That's why. you know how when you're a kid and you, you sometimes go to the bathroom and you're peeing and then you don't flush the toilet? That was me, but for pooping. <laughs> but because oh. there was something in there. Uh-huh. Hmm. And that's the story of the poop ghost. The poop ghost. Does, uh... Does right, Asian uh, Audio Man yeah, want to get Michael, up? you want to hop in this and tell us your real ghost story? His name is Asian Audio Man. Yeah, God, Brady. SMH my head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Freaking shameful, is this, dude. Is this going to be about the Zeus I, I feel like it's Zeus. I, yeah. It's Zeus, right? Ex explain the Zeus stat statue for okay, the podcast. Then this might take a little longer. Okay. That's fine. Well, you got time. Why don't you introduce yourself? He's he's been on before. Oh yes, all right, never mind. Sorry about that. <laughs> we're good. Yeah, we're yeah. we're ready. Yeah. All right. So a little backstory. Um, my mom's grandmother's house. So my great grandmother's house was like legit haunted. And when my mom was my age, so around seventeen, eighteen, she'd go over there every single summer to spend, you know, time with her grandparents, and some weird stuff really happened because they used to play with Ouija boards mm -hmm. and then like just a lot started to happen to my mom like it was if you've ever seen the conjuring there's this some scenes where uh, these people hear clapping like in midair like when there's nothing there and my mom every time she tried to go go to sleep she'd hear that like right in her ear Ugh. um and then sometimes hmm. there was this one time my mom told me she was in the shower and she was home alone and she could have sworn she heard people like trash in their whole house so she hurried out of the shower and looked and everything was like all cleaned up and that nothing was wrong um and the radio would turn on and off by itself in that house and sometimes they would like rent a room out to people and every single guest like the night after they slept they would ask like you know do you have more people laying here or like staying here mm -hmm. because they would hear old ladies talking in the walls and there were like no old ladies Whoa. besides the grandmother oh my god oh that's yeah freaky and so anyway so that weird creepy. stuff happened at that house and from that house my parents took a little statue of zeus from the house and put it in my current house's basement um and weird stuff only happens in my house when i'm home alone for the most part so in eighth grade, I came home from school. It was like three o'clock. No, no, no. So eighth grade, it ends at three. So I was home at like 3.30. And I'm the only one there. 
my basement has always creeped me out because that's where there's new statues, cats. Um, so the very first thing I do after I enter my house is shut the, the basement door and I made sure it was closed and there was no way like a breeze could knock it open or something. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, I spent like an hour like, eating and watching TV or whatever. And I just happened to walk by it and the basement door is wide open and I'm the only one in the house. And then during the same week, I was looking for my school book. Again, I was home alone, and I never read that thing, so I always had it in my backpack. And the one time I decided to read it, I went to my backpack, and it wasn't there. And I was like, okay, maybe I took it out and placed it somewhere I don't remember. And I spent half an hour looking for it, and I found it above where I usually keep my backpack on this shelf. It was literally the only thing on the shelf. Like, there was nothing else. And I never put anything on that shelf. And that book was sitting, like, face to flat, face down on to, on that empty shelf by itself. What? And uh, then another example. This time, my parents were home with me, but they don't believe me. Like, they don't believe this happened. I was in my room at night getting my outfit ready for the next school day. And I felt someone poke me in my back. I turned around, there was no one there, so I ran out of my room. I Holy told you. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> was that you, Luke? No, that wasn't me. That was someone over in the room next door, I think. That's I the hope. bathroom. Do you want me to go check? No, that was a that was from upstairs. I, think. I don't know if the mic picked know. that up, but someone just like tapped. It, it sounded it like either, somebody knocked either, their like their knee on the bottom yeah, of the desk. It was either yeah. from the bathroom next door it or was upstairs. Like the whole vibe. Like yeah. Going. So something poked me on my back. And I turn around, there's nothing there. I run out of my room, tell my mom and dad, it's like, something just poked me in my back. And they're like, no, it didn't. And they never, ever believe me on stuff. And then a fourth time, I think that's my fourth story. I was home alone again after school. I was heating something in the microwave. And then I just happened to look up on my ceiling and there's this weird light, like a rippling light on my ceiling. And I looked around because I was like, oh, maybe it's a reflection on something. But there was nothing it could be reflecting off of. It was just some weird light shining on my ceiling. Home alone. That's so weird. That's, yeah, that's actually that's, so weird. That's I Zeus statue, like that. man. Yeah. Like, that's <clears throat> whack. If yeah. You take, you, well, I think you should do an experiment and, like, without really telling your parents or anything, just move the Zeus statue thing, like, out of your house. For like a night or something, just like put it on like in your backyard or something like that, and just see what happens. Uninstall. Yeah. The, the yeah. Un yeah. Like, uninstall the uninstall your statues. Zeus drives. No, that's that's <laughs> when that's when the haunted stuff starts to happen because then all of a sudden the Zeus statue is gonna be back in your house. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna move oh, out. Oh, dude, yeah. that's, that's when you say, be like, okay, okay right, let's destroy out. this thing. You're gonna ask your parents, hey, did you move the statue back in there? And be like, no, it's always been there. Uh. Bro. I definitely, oh, I definitely oh think you God. should. I think you should try that. Like, we yeah. should, we and should all go to Michael's house one night and do that. Bro, we should do like a, a we should video. like sneak into his house and steal the Zeus statue. Yeah, and like kill his parents. And then <laughs> wow. Okay, that got statue. really dark. I mean, you, you don't have to kill them, but <laughs> you don't have to. But I can't. <laughs> the option done. is there. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. That's my real life story. All right. All right. Give it up for Asian audio man, Michael. <laughs> All right, so who wants to go next? I got a story uh, ready to go if anyone doesn't have one. All right. You, you can go. All right. So this is from uh, the Reddit page r slash no sleep. <clears throat> this reminds from too. And this one, this one is called always lock up your firearms. It was like any other day. I returned home from the office exhausted from a day of spreadsheets and false customer service. Uh, facade. Facade, yes. <laughs> um, that was re required at my at my mental job in the city. I was pulled into my I pulled into my I pulled into our driveway. The podcast I was <laughs> I was listening to was droning out the background. The Real Talk Podcast? Yeah, of course. It's definitely the Real Talk Listen on podcast. YouTube and Spotify? Uh, a white noise from my uh, extens extensive commute home. I shut off shut off the car and sighed heavily. Gathering my belongings from the car, before opening the, the doors, before opening the driver door, 
I was looking up. The, uh, <laughs> Brandon, do you need to take a minute? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I'm struggling. Do you know yeah. how to – just read it. <laughs> does Does anyone else have any real scary stories? Hold on. Real scary stories? Your mom's house. I don't have any real ones because my house is not haunted or scary. All right. I'm good now. The walk to our home was a brief few steps to the front door, up our paved pathway. My keys jingled as I fiddled the, with the sliding door into the lock. The mechanism clicked loudly as I turned my key, pushing the door open. I'm home. My voice echoed through the seemingly empty house, which was strange because my wife and two children should be home. Samuel was seven and his sister, Charlene, was three. The lack of noise was highly uncharacteristic. Pew, pew, Samuel jumped out of his hiding place behind our couch, brandishing my handgun and aiming it at me as he continued to make fake gun noises. And I pretended to, f- and, and pretended to feel the recoil, a uh, pretend to feel the recoil of the pistol. Sweat immediately <laughs> beaded on my forehead. The handgun should have been hidden away in my stock drawer. We we kept it in the case of our home for our home invasion. And it was and it was loaded. The situation I found myself in was a perilous one, as anyone who has children knows that everything is a game to them. Sammy, where'd you find that? Let's go ahead and put put the gun down for Daddy, okay? I I tried to keep my voice as calm calm as I spoke to my firstborn. I could feel the puddles of sweat in my armpits as I gently set my belongings down and walked towards Samuel. Pew pew, no, Daddy, you're a bad guy, and we have to shoot bad guys. The fact his finger consciously. I I I am retarded. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> Play, <laughs> the bro. This man is this man is illiterate, dog. You want to read it? What? What? When you have dyslexia, you? right there. <laughs> Wait, Cole. <laughs> read into a microphone if you're gonna read an entire story. The fact his finger was not currently on the trigger was a poor consolation prize of him placing the gun down. I slowly inched closer. Before I could get close enough to Samuel, he wrapped his finger around the trigger and pulled. Click, click, click came the mechanical sound of the hammer hitting, but no muzzle flash nor bang, accompanied by the clicking. I froze instantly like a deer caught in headlights, unnerved by the noise, but even more so the fact that the handgun, which I knew I had loaded, now seemed spent. But I'm a good guy, Sammy. We don't hurt good guys. I'm your superhero, aren't I? I asked, attempting to remind him of the pedestal he placed on me. Placed me on. Sammy jumped off the couch, causing me to wince and flinch back as he ran up to me, wrapping his arms around my leg and giving me a hug. You're right, Daddy, but Mommy and Charlene were bad guys while you were gone. My mouth was a desert. The hairs on my neck stood up and end as I reached down and gently pried the fire from Samuel's Samuel's gas. Wait here. Whoop. Wait here, son. I'm going to go check on your mother and sister. Robotically, as I began heading towards the room where our queen-sized bed lay, along with Charlene's crib. Please be okay. Please be okay. I repeated as, as if the mantra would take away the horror that was about to befall my vision. As I rounded the corner, I found my family, sand son, huddled together, blood pooling beneath them. My sight blurred. Two of the three loves of my life lay before me, holes filling their body like some sort of sick Swiss cheese. A coppery odor coated my nose and throat as I gagged. My wife was huddled tightly around Charlene in an obvious attempt to shield her from Samuel's misguided crusade against the bad guys. I could feel my insides twist as I retched, emptying the contents of my stomach on the floor, the world spinning as I blacked out, the last thing I remember before waking up to sirens. Always lock up your firearms. Oh, crap. I mean, I butchered it out of the game, but that was a good-ass story. Oh, my God, dude. That's slash intense. No sleep. Yeah, our slash no sleep is so good. Like, jeez. Yeah. One like, time. One uh, time I that's spent, so crazy. One time I spent an entire like road trip just reading stories from that. One of the comments says the tag is child abuse. I love how it is literally a child abusing the adults. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That's an intense story though. You know, I was like. I didn't think much of it when he was like, oh, like, it's empty. It's like, okay. And then he was like, oh, mom, uh, like, my sister and mom were the bad guys before he got home. And I was like, Once he oh, said no. that it was empty, I'm like, oh, like, crap. Oh, no. I thought that, uh, 
I thought that he was going to be like a pedophile because that's how half of those stories go, you know? Mm. Mm-hmm. That's insane. That's, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oof. yeah. Oh, was, man. Our slash no sleep is so good. Seven I've years old, never, too. I don't really use Reddit that much, but I might have to start reading through these sometimes. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's there's a lot of really good subreddits. Some of them are good. There's so many crazy ones. Like, there's a... Uh, Mini lag or mini lad or like Craig Thompson, uh, obviously the same people, but uh, he he just has a whole series on his YouTube channel of him just reading r slash no sleep, and it's those are so entertaining. He reads like three to four stories, and then uh, and that's that that's the video, but it, it's so good. That's how I learned about this subreddit from mini lad. But yeah, does anyone have any other stories? Brandon, do you have one? I just found one. Would All right, like? uh, so this one again from r slash no sleep. It does uh, say, hold on, I gotta fix my mic real quick. It does say that this is a not safe for work story, so just be forewarned. We'll probably put like a disclaimer at the beginning of this episode mm-hmm. of some of these things are scary and mature topics. Yeah. So, yeah, just be warned. All right, so this one's called autopilot. Uh, Have you ever forgotten your phone? When did you realize you'd forgotten it? I'm guessing you didn't just smack your forehead and exclaim, damn, a promise of nothing. The realization probably didn't dawn on you spontaneously. More likely you reached for your phone, pawing open your pocket or handbag, and were momentarily confused by it not being there. Then you did a mental restep of the morning's events. Shit. In my case, my phone's alarm woke me up as normal, but I realized the battery was lower than I expected. It was a new phone, and it had this annoying habit of leaving applications running that drain the battery overnight. So I put it onto charge while I showered and set it into my bag like normal. It was a momentary slip from the routine, but that was all it took. Once in the shower, my brain got back into the routine it follows every morning, and that was it. Forgotten. This wasn't just me being clumsy, as I later later researched. This is a recognized brain function. Your brain doesn't just work on one level, it works on many. Like, when you're walking somewhere, you think about your destination and avoiding hazards, but you don't need to think about keeping your legs moving properly. If you did, the entire world would turn into one massive, hilarious Q-WAP cosplay. I don't know what that is. You I wasn't don't know think- what Q-WAP is? I don't. What is Q-WAP? It's, uh, it's a really old game that's like a Flash game, and you have to control your character with Q, W, and O, and T. Oh, yeah. And oh. it's, like, impossible, unless oh. you get the oh, technique. Oh, yeah. Down. I remember that. Oh. I wasn't thinking about regulating my breathing. I was thinking whether I should grab a coffee on the drive to work. I did. I wasn't thinking about moving my breakfast through my intestines. I was wondering whether I'd finish on time to pick up my daughter Emily from nursery after work or get stuck with another late fee. This is the thing. There's a level on your brain that just deals with routine so that the rest of the brain can think about other things. Think about it. Think about your last commute. What do you actually remember? Little, if anything, probably. Most common journeys blur into one, and recalling any one in particular is scientifically proven to be difficult. Do something often enough and it becomes routine. Keep doing it and it stops being processed by the thinking bit of the brain and gets relegated to a part of the brain dedicated to dealing with routine. Your brain keeps doing it without you thinking about it. Soon you think about your route to work as much as you do keeping your legs moving while you walk. As in, not at all. Most people call it autopilot, but there's a danger there. If you have a break in your routine, your ability to remember and account for the break is only as good as your ability to stop your brain going into routine mode. My ability to remember my phone being on the counter is only as reliable as my ability to stop my brain entering morning routine mode, which would dictate that my phone is actually in my bag. But I didn't stop my brain entering routine mode. I got in the shower as normal. Routine started. Exception forgotten. Autopilot engaged. My brain was back in the routine. I showered, I shaved, the radio forecast amazing weather. I gave Emily her breakfast and loaded her into the car. She was so adorable that morning. She complained about the bad sun in the morning blinding her, saying it stopped her having a little sleep on the way to the nursery, and left. That was the routine. It didn't matter that my phone was on the counter, charging silently. My brain was in the routine, and in the routine, my phone was in my bag. This is why I forgot my phone. Not clumsiness, not negligence. Nothing more my brain entering routine mode and overriding the exception. Autopilot engaged. I left for work. It's a swelteringly hot day already. The bad sun had been burning since before my 
traitorously absent phone woke me. The steering wheel was burning hot to the touch when I sat down. I think I heard Emily shift over behind my driver's seat to get out of the glare. But I got to work, submitted the report, attended the morning meeting. It's not until I took a quick coffee break and reached for my phone that the illusion shattered. I did a mental reset. I remembered the dying battery. I remembered putting it on to charge. I remembered leaving it there. My phone was on the counter. Autopilot disengaged. Again, therein lies the danger. Until you have that moment, the moment you reach for your phone still in routine mode and shatter the illusion. It has no reason to question the facts of the routine. That's why it's a routine. Attrition of repetition. It's not as if anyone could say, why didn't you remember your phone? Didn't it occur to you? How could you forget? You must be negligent. This is to miss the point. My brain was telling me the routine was completed as normal, despite the fact that it wasn't. It wasn't that I forgot my phone. According to my brain, according to the routine, my phone was in my bag. Why would I think to question it? Why would I check? Why would I suddenly remember out of nowhere that my phone was on the counter? My brain was wired into the routine, and the routine that was that, was that my phone was in my bag. The day continued to bake. The morning haze gave way to the relentless fever heat of the afternoon. Tarmac bubbled. The direct beams of heat threatened to crack the pavement. People swapped coffees for ice smoothies. Jackets discarded, sleeves rolled up, ties loosened, brows mopped. The park slowly filled with sunbathers and barbecues. Window frames threatened to warp. The thermometer continued to swell. Thank F word. The, the offices were air conditioned. But as ever, the furnace of the day gave way to a cooler evening. Another day, another dollar. Still cursing myself for forgetting my phone, I drove home. The day's heat had baked the inside of the car, releasing a horrible smell from somewhere. When I arrived on the driveway, the stones crunching con comfortingly under my tires, my wife greeted me at the door. Where's Emily? F word. As if the phone wasn't bad enough, after everything, I'd left Emily at the F word in nursery after all. I immediately sped back to the nursery. I got to the door and started practicing my excuses, wondering vainly if I could charm my way out of the late fee. I saw, I saw a piece of paper stuck to the door. Due to vandalism overnight, please use side door. Today only. Overnight? What? The door was fine this morning. I froze. My knees shook. Vandals. A change in the routine. My phone was on the counter. I hadn't been here this morning. My phone was on the counter. I'd driven past because I was drinking my coffee. I'd not dropped off Emily. My phone was on the counter. She'd moved her seat. I hadn't seen her in the mirror. My phone was on the counter. She'd fallen asleep out of the bad sun. She didn't speak when I drove past her nursery. My phone was on the counter. She'd changed the routine. My phone was on the counter. She'd changed the routine and I'd forgotten to drop her off. My phone was on the counter. Nine hours. That car. That baking sun. No air. No water. No power. No help. That heat. A steering wheel too hot to touch. That smell. I walked to the car door. Numb. Shock. I opened the door. My phone was on the counter and my daughter was dead. Autopilot disengaged. I called it. Bro, oh I just I just got I just got the chills, bro. Holy I just got the chills. Holy oh crap. Just that dude needs to make movies. Oh my Holy. god. Dude, the writing in that was like top Jeez. tier, oh man. My there god. were words in there I didn't even know. And like, Can... I think I have a pretty good oh, I just say Holy. I called it. Dude. dude, I gotta take my I sweatshirt. Chills, I got dude. the chills at the end of oh that, bro. Can, can I just say oh I called it? I called my it god. Oh my god. Once, once That's he said, so good, once dude. Once he said that that smell was in his car from the heat, I was like, no, no, that's his daughter. I called it to Cole. That's in. Oh the my. Yeah. <laughs> I called it. Not a single person cares. We called it. I care. Oh, that story is insane. That was, that was. That was a ridiculous like story. Like the whole like. Jesus man. Autopilot shit. What? Yeah, and it's like, it's. It's a real I thing. Like that could actually happen. Yeah. It does. It, it, yeah. Yeah. I, don't what I know. Doing. Like I dr I've driven to CCC before and forgotten that I drove here. Because I was just doing it. Because you just a, a regular routine. Yeah. Like, I've been sitting in traffic on a highway, and I'm like, when did I get to this part of the highway? 
Mm-hmm. And I'll be, I'll be like, I'll be, um, like, I'll be with my friends, and I'll be like, I don't even remember coming over. Like, because you're just, it's just like routine. Yeah. It's just part of your day. And it just happens so often that it just becomes monotonous to you. Yeah. And it's, you don't even realize that it's happening because it's just so normal. Yeah. Like, I wake up in the morning and I get in the shower and I come out of the shower sometimes and I'm like drying off my hair. I'm like, when did I even wake up? Yeah. When did I get out of bed? Like, when did any of mm-hmm. this happen? And like, I know everyone's felt that same way. Oh, yeah. I definitely has, have that's happened done that to someone before. At least one point in their life where something has been going on and you didn't, and you don't even remember how you got to that point. It's ridiculous because like it had to have just happened and like you like you're like but this I had to have gotten here this way but I don't even remember doing it like there's only one way I could have gotten to this point but I don't remember even getting to that point like I don't even remember that part in between there but there's only one so it had to have happened but I don't remember it happening mm-hmm. and that's it, it, it's terrifying this it really autopilot is. was engaged that's yeah insane it's, it's really scary like that yeah our mind that's that. insane oh my god that was a really really good story I don't think anything's gonna top that. Send that, send that to the chat, please. Right. Yeah, yeah, that was good. insane. You know, it's like there's like Cole was saying, like that he should write movies. Like there's so many people on R slash No Sleep have like just insane writing, like that. Like it's just I don't. They they just post their stuff on Reddit and they like they, like they should be out making movies. Like it's it's unbelievable how good people are at writing. Stories, Cole, right? I'm just gonna send it to you, and then I'm gonna send it to our podcast chat because I don't want people to get you know spoilers okay. before they listen to it. That's fine. Yeah, that's insane. That is so good. I'm still thinking like yeah, the no, ending like, of that. I, like I'm like that happens almost daily to me, especially when I'm driving for some reason. Like I'll be I'll be getting on the highway and I like merge into traffic, and I'm like, but I don't even remember getting on. Like I don't remember driving from my house to the merge ramp. Like that happens. That's yeah. that's my most common thing that I forget. Yeah, is getting from my house to the highway. I mm-hmm. drive in between that that five minute drive. I don't. Because you do it so often that yeah, it's like it it's all, like muscle I do it memory most essentially. Time, three times a day. So it's like it. Oh man, it's really weird. Oh that my god. It's so Jesus. crazy. And the way that story ended, just like everything with like oh. the daughter. Yeah, I thought I thought I thought she was gonna be like left at the. At the school or something. I, that's like what that. I thought, I but then like, like the phone's on the counter. I'm like, oh yeah. Whoa. I'm definitely gonna read this when I can't sleep at night, like because I have really bad insomnia. So like I can, I've gone like a month without sleep. Like Jesus, like, oh I've gone, crap. Like, two months without sleep. Oh my like, god. The longest time. So if I can't sleep, I'll usually just try to find something to do. That's what I'll do. That's a. Now. I'm gonna be reading. Whoa. Well. See, I'm the I'm the opposite of that. I'll tr- I'll try to like keep myself awake because there's something I want to like finish watching, like the last ten minutes of an episode of something, right. and I'll just straight up fall asleep with my phone in front of me, and then I'll wake mm-hmm. up and my phone's on like five percent. I've, really, I've done really that on, like irritating. the weekends, but like I always have my phone plugged in so it's charged. Yeah. But like I'll go to like back to like my, my my YouTube watch history, and there's like five other videos because it goes yeah. on autoplay. Yeah, I know. Especially, like, if you're in, like, one of those, like, playlists or whatever, it just yeah, goes through the entire thing. One of, my, one of my, actually, my good friends, he has uh, Extreme Mania, which is, a, it's, it's part of bipolar depression, and uh, basically he goes into these manic episodes where he can't, he doesn't really have any control over his emotions, and I, I also have bipolar, but it's not as bad as him. It is mm-hmm. bad, like, I have bipolar 2, but he has bipolar 1, which means his manic episodes can go for weeks. And so he has gone, um, apparently he, he's told us before many times that he's gone, um, like two weeks where he, he knows that things happened, but he didn't remember how they happened. And he doesn't know. Hmm. It's like, it's almost like, it's like almost just like a a multiple week long fever dream. And he has no idea what's going, like he's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. And he doesn't know how he got there for the entire week. And it's terrifying. It's like what you were just talking. It's like autopilot that he doesn't have control over, and it's not muscle memory. It's just that he's doing things but doesn't realize he's doing them. Mm. And it's really scary. Like it's, it's like he like he it's like a blackout essentially. Basically yeah. A, black, a conscious blackout. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. It's, yeah. And I've gotten those too, but it's not as long because my 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 manic episodes are like usually just a couple hours because I have bipolar two. Mm-hmm. So bipolar one is like days, weeks of of. Oh. So, yeah. But anyways, um, should we go to the next story? Yeah, anyone else have a story? Um, I have one pulled up from Reddit. I'll yeah, because we've still time. got like 20 minutes left. 20 minutes? All right, that's probably enough time All to right. read this one. So this is called, um, 
My adoptive family have something sinister planned. Um, it's tagged in child abuse and books and writing. So I, I haven't read this at all, and I don't know anything about it, so I don't know what exactly is going to be in here, but I'll try to censor it as I can. Um, but yeah, so. Hello. It's 12 a.m. here. I'm scared. I hear their voices from downstairs. They're singing again. Let me begin where it all started. I apologize if I can't finish my story. I don't know how much longer I have. I was adopted on October 22nd from a foster home. They entered the living space, the man in a dark suit and a red tie. Pretty generic. His face was sunken and his hair slightly parted to the right. His body was a combination of skinny and massively overweight. The woman wore black as well. A dress. Under her eyes, dark bags. Her fingernails were painted a dark red and her hair was graying at the roots. The supervisor introduced them as Mr. and Mrs. Livion. He also said that they were willing to adopt and wanted to stay with the kids for a while. As they sat down on a wide grin, as they sat down on their chairs, the chair, hold on, as they sat down on the chairs made, especially for the guests, I noticed a wide grin form on their faces. Their eyes, however, did not change. They had smiled only with their mouths. About an hour, after about an hour, the Lagones and the supervisor exited the room. I was thankful they weren't going to pick me. No one wants the 14-year-old fat kid, right? Wrong. Actually, terribly so. After another 20 minutes, they returned to the room. The supervisor called me over. I hesitantly approached. The, the Lavones are looking to adopt you, said the supervisor. Isn't that great? Uh, yeah, cool. I knew this wasn't going to last long. I had bounced in and out of homes for as long as I can remember. Also, if you ever disagree with the supervisor, he would. Let's not get into that. I'm just glad that I didn't have to find out the hard way. Anyway, we walked to the office to fill out the adoption form. The man signed, he held the pen with his right, then the woman with her left, then me. The supervisor beamed and the Lavones grinned their lifeless grin. Soon, soon we were in their car, also black. The windows had a dark tint. We had been write, writing for half an hour and no one spoke. I decided to take the first step. Hey, I called out. I was met with silence and slightly annoyed. Hey, slightly louder this time. Speak when you're spoken to, bellowed the man. Wow, okay then, I mumbled under my breath. Prick. We drove for maybe another hour. We were well out of the city. All I could see from my window were seemingly repeated fields of green. I was beginning to doze off when the woman started screaming. I jumped in my seat, and my heart was racing. The woman was shrieking. It sounded like agony. The very definition of wretchedness. The man began sobbing and mumbling. I cowered into the corner of the car. The screaming had and sobbing continued for ten more minutes. Then nothing. It stopped abruptly as it began. We arrived. The house deceiving. Beautiful from afar, but when you got close, you could see it. The cracks, the paint peeling off. There was also a barn. Dark red like the woman's nails. They had opened the door. Not only did I realize that one stood in front of me and the other behind me. Welcome home. The Lavones did not give me a house tour. The man dragged me upstairs through through me wait. The drag the man dragged me upstairs through me in a room and locked the door. There was a window, but it was barricaded. Shit, shit, shit. The singing is getting louder. I don't think I have much left. For the next three or four days, they didn't unlock me from the door. I think a Japanese person wrote this because the grammar is awful. Like, that's most. <laughs> mu that's I probably half of all Reddit like stories the are. Is really, yeah. really bad. It's sorry. So, I'm like, from. He said, he said the man threw me upstairs, but it's through as if like going through something. Like, <laughs> through, like, yeah, because oh, most oh. Reddit stories so are that's like. That's why I was confused. I was like, yeah. Oh, that's not right. Most Anyways. Reddit stories are like, yeah, English yeah. is my second language and I'm on mobile, so sorry for bad oh, grammar. Yeah. Sorry for bad formatting. It says, for the yeah. next three or four day, they didn't <laughs> unlock me from the door. The woman would slide me food from a small space underneath the door. The food was always meat, and it always tasted revolting. The screaming and sobbing would start every day at the same time. To say the least, I was afraid, alone, and overall in a pretty crappy situation. On the fifth night, the singing started, the chanting more like. It was horrifying, their voices. It was coarse, hateful, despicable. The singing would continue for a while, then their voices would become louder, louder, and then louder again. Then nothing. Then running, the sound of footsteps, running around the house, bumping into things, breaking things. I was always on my phone, trying to call the police, the CPS, basically everything. 
It was apparent that the couple had managed to block all calls. It was so frustrating. I hated it. I was always so scared, so angry. You never know true fear until you can't know the difference between fear and whatever the opposite of fear is. I like that. Hmm. Like I was saying, I was on my phone trying to bypass the block. I knew why they let me have it, the phone. They were ha- they were taunting me, making fun of me. I dropped my phone and accidentally kicked it under the makeshift bed when feeling around. I felt a rectangular object. Ob- I spelled object horribly wrong. <laughs> when feeling around, I felt an, a rectangular object. I pulled it out. A book. I began to flip through it. There were pictures of the Lavones, and then the people in a white mask singing in a circle. I turned more pages that had similar pictures, each one making me more uneasy than the last. More pictures. Pictures of kids similar to me, strapped to poles with wounds, blood oozing out of them. Then the mementos, teeth, hair, fingers, and other things I couldn't dream of unseeing on the off chance I ever make it out of this hellhole. The last sentence of the book was, they always taste so good. I threw up. I retained my composure some time later and began to examine the book. There was a note strapped to the back of it. If you're unfortunate enough to be reading this, my name is Marcus Avery. I was adopted from a foster home on April 29, 2019. The people who adopted me were a man and a woman. They were called the Fergusons. If you've managed to find this note, I assume you've read the book and it's I assume you've read the book this note was strapped to, so you know your fate. I have been here for five or six days as of now. I managed to weaken the boards and the barricade at the windows with a fork and a knife they've been giving us during mealtime. I don't know if I will make it out of here, and I've accepted it. I consider all my, all my efforts a success. If anyone else can make it out of here, and if you do, you know, succeed, maybe, you can tell the world about me or something. I'm not the sensitive... Oh my god, you cursing is so bad at spelling. I'm not the sensitive type, but tears begin to roll down my eyes. I hear them running now. I have to go. I manage to s- manage to break some of the boards so that I can squeeze out. If I do make it out, you will hear more of my tale that has now become yours. God. Holy chills, crap. dude! Yeah. Yeah. Chills, bro. That's body. intense. <laughs> when they said I was, they, when they said they always taste good, I'm like, oh. No, when when, when they when they're saying. Oh, they give me food, but it's usually I meet and taste bad. I was like, it's cannibalism. It yeah, oh, I, I whispered yeah. that. Oh, I whispered oh, that to Luke. The meat is the yeah. kids. I whispered oh, that to Luke. Oh. That's why they adopted the fat kids, because they're gonna oh, cook them and eat them. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I whispered that to Luke as soon as he said something about the yeah. meat. I'm like, yeah, that's Dude, that's cannibalism. Uh, that sucks. Dude, Dude, that's I not. I okay. got like when you started reading the last note, I started getting the little ones on my arm, and then at the end, it just <sighs> like yeah. all through oh, my, my entire body. Oh, oh my was, god. That, was, that, that one, was one was good. That one was good, but I will I still think that your autopilot one. Yeah, that, that, it was just how it was it was just the yeah, writing yeah, for the autopilot. Yeah, it was really was good. Insane. It wasn't sorry guys, I I'm Japanese like, I and I'm on mobile. A, I want to make a film about that. Sorry for yeah. mobile I formatting. Figure out how to screenplay that and like successfully That would be That's really, a good idea. Really that would be cool. so cool. And then like like send it to the writer and be like, "Here you go, buddy." Be like, "Yeah, we made a movie out of you." That would be sick. That would be awesome. That would be so that would cool. Be so cool. He would be so that's proud. actually such a good idea. He'd be, I, he'd be honestly, really happy. Honestly, I think. like that's a summer project. Yeah. That would be so yeah. cool. That would, definitely that would be, be something awesome. I'd like to do over summer. I'm down to help you. Yeah, I'm, that's, I'm, I'm so that's not a bad idea. I'm, I'm already so DP. Down. I called it. <laughs> I'll write the script. Just kidding. No, I'm not going to write the script. <laughs> that would be so cool. And there's a... Uh, no words, though. No talking. Some of, some of these stories are real. So I I'm, I don't know. Uh, the ones that we read today, I don't know how real those are. But... Uh, I don't think I don't think they're real. Mine, I don't I don't think the autopilot one was real. Mine's yeah. not. I I but there are some that are real. Like there's some that are uh uh there was there was this one I I heard about where it was like a it was either like a firefighter or a paramedic wrote um about something that he saw like on his job. So some of them are real. Obvi- obviously not all of them and chances are majority of them are fake, but every once in a while I think you do get ones that are real. How much real. more time do we have? We have like fifteen minutes. Yeah, I, I have you one want... as well. I, I can go after you. Hold on, hold on. Quick, Wait, quick. Is that not like took me five minutes to read that? Give or take. Yeah. It takes faster than you th- than it feels like. Okay, well, I found another one that might be interesting because I had a disturbing conversation with my neighbor ten minutes ago. It's, it's possible. It's not. It's yeah. nine thirty. It's nine thirty four now. Okay. All I right. think me and Luke hold should on. get ours yeah, so ben, ben in. Should yeah. Go. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Ben, ben should go hold, since hold. I've already said one. All right, this one is also from Reddit No Sleep. It's called Huska Castle, and I'll just start reading it. 
It was the late 13th century. The villagers nearby had been plagued for hundreds of years by horrible whales that made makes blood run cold. Terrifying winged demons and grotesque animal-human hybrids coming from the deep, dark pit. One day, there was a criminal that the town planned to hang. The elders had grown curious, so he was given a choice. He be hanged or be lowered into the pit. He chose the pit, but when he was lowered in, screams and shouts of terror and suffering we heard, were heard. When he was dragged back up, he had appeared to age 30 years. He, when he was finally able to talk, he told a story full of terrors. He told a tale of pillars of fire, winged demons, rivers of blood, and seas of tortured souls. He was so shaken, he was bedridden for several days before dying. The people of the town lowered many other criminals into the pit, and they all told the exact same stories and died within the week. Soon, the villagers chose to seal the pit. They sealed the pit with stone and brick, but still the horrible screams continued. Not only did the screams continue, but the demons and hybrids became violent, attacking the town. The people of the town continued, could bear it no longer. They built a castle atop the covered pit in hopes that it would quiet the sounds. Its name, Kuska Castle. The noises still plagued the village, and the demons and hybrids kept appearing out of nowhere and laying waste to the village. So the villagers bricked up the first floor so so the first floor was inaccessible. Finally the noises and attacks stopped, but one on clear nights at the stroke of midnight, by the light of the full moon, the terrifying screams are heard again and seven young boys and seven young girls disappear mysteriously. The city nearby the that village has long since been abandoned, <laughs> but in a large city nearby, the horrifying screams are heard on the wind of seven young boys and seven young girls vanish. The children vanishing, vanishing are dismissed because the city is so large, found in an abandoned... What? This is so bad. Reddit it grammar? Yeah. The children vanishing are dismissed because the city is so large, but every time the children vanish, they are found in an abandoned building dead with, without a scratch, except the number on their forehead, always seven. To this day, nobody knows what happens to those who are taken or how or why they end up dead. I was there in the beginning. I was there to watch them as they built the village. I was there at the end of the village, and I will be there at the end. I was there advising the villagers, whispering in their ears, telling them what to do to keep safe, and it, and it was their undoing. They thought I was there to help. They thought I was good. They thought I planned to seal the pit. They thought I was going to save them. My name is Seven. What they did not know is that I was of the pit. Damn. That's Dang. it. I don't get that it. one had bad grammar as well. That yeah. one, okay, so that one wasn't great, but it was a good story. Yeah. 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 It wasn't really, like, that scary. I think if it were written better, it could have been a lot more scary and a yeah. lot better. I think yeah. My favorite is the cannibalism. I'm, I'm really? not. Yeah. Really? really? I love the autopilot, autopilot one. Autopilot is definitely Autopilot's my favorite. my favorite. That was really, really good. Mm -hmm. How much more time do we have? We have a decent bit of time. We got like can, nine, four, yeah. four, can I read this one that I found? We can go. We can go a little over. Yeah. yeah. The best one are the real stories, like actually, yeah. like some things that could actually happen. Yeah. So I think this one, they say is a real story. C can I say it? Can I? Yeah. What? It's on the No Sleep subreddit. It has like four award, four awards for four. No Sleep. So wait, what are the awards? Um, oh dang! It's yeah. It's got if you're if you're a Reddit user, you understand. Yeah. It's got a platinum, a gold, and two silvers. So, a, that, a, yeah, in, it's people that pay for Reddit. They get awards and stuff, and you can give platinum is like the highest one you can give, right. and then gold, and then silver is like the lowest one. But okay. it, I mean, even just silver is more than just an upvote. Right. Okay, so yeah, th this one also has more upvotes than usual for the subreddit. So I'm just gonna read it and. Hopefully it lives up to the hype. It's called, My Great Aunt Was There When the Bomb Was Dropped on Nagasaki. She says there was something in the fallout. 
I only met my Ob Obasan twice in my life. The first time was when I was a little girl of ten on a family vacation where she gave me a jar of oil as a gift and told my mother with some degree of disgust, coat my dirty blonde hair in it to rid me of my whiteness. The second came at the tail end of her life, a decade later, her body riddled with tumors and unable to support her frame. She was confined to her bed and desperate to say something to me, but too damaged by the cancer to do so. I stood there, holding my mom's hand as we watched this once powerful woman slowly but surely fade from this world. She kept her eyes fixated on the weather, out of the window, weather out of the window, even as she took her final breaths, the unmistakable look of regret ever present on her face as she passed away. As we were arranging her affairs, I was more than a little surprised to know that she'd left something beyond another backhanded racist gift. Instead, it was a small, worn-down book with the leather extremely faded, bleached in some areas and bound with a, with a sturdy thread that looked a lot newer than the rest of it. I started reading on the flight home, struggling at times with the pre-war phases. What was between those pages finds itself here because not only do I believe what she saw was real, but I worry it never truly left. What you see below is as it was documented by my Obasan to my family here in the States, save for some charges to make sense to Western audiences. Hanako-san, I'm scared. How, how are you and your family holding up? I heard they may be taking you away from your home. I don't understand why, but please be safe. I don't know if you'll read this, but I need to talk to someone about what's going on here. I've never been so scared in all my life. Mother told me at not to go down to school the day the bomb was dropped. I had my uniform ready and was eager to see my friends. What teen wouldn't be? But the look in her eyes told me she knew more than she was letting on when she reassured, just don't, to me, without any elaboration or follow-up. Mother didn't keep secrets or lie. That wasn't who she was. I did as I was told, not knowing how it would save my life. First came the sound the guttural scream, guttural scream from a veranda opposite our screaming one word, plane, something that otherwise brought feelings of amusement instead of bringing abject horror, terror. As we cast our eyes upward, the steel bird flying towards us, I could see our neighbors and community members rushing inside. My mother grabbed me and called my father, who rushed us to the to the dining room, ripping up the tama tatami boards and <laughs> shoving us inside, shielding us with his body as it happened. Keep your eyes shut, Hina, my father shouted as the chaos outside crescendoed, his voice being drowned by the imminent blast, tears in his eyes, my mother shaking next to me and clasping at, at his arms to try and free herself so she could protect him, but he was too strong. He refused to move or take his eyes off of us, his face permanently residing in the back of my mind whenever I close my eyes. Hanako, for as long as I live, I will never forget the flash. It was instant, as if a million camera bulbs had just gone off at once. The impact, as the sun itself had been, had found disgust in what she saw and cast judgment on us all. It felt as if God himself had struck down on our land. I knew death before that moment. I never knew death before that moment, but I will forever associate it with the terrifying light shining through my home. I screamed without, the, without sound for as long as I could before the roof above us began to crumble and everything went dark. It was dark for a long time after that, and a neighbor pulled me and my parents out of the rubble their arm riddled with thick black burn marks that I would later learn were flash burns. He feigned a smile as he tried to reassure my parents would be okay, his teeth always rotting and falling out. He scared me, but I was grateful to be alive. We found refuge at the local supermarket. They hold it out and turned it into a sick bay. There are so many people here writing in pain that I could barely focus on my dad writhing in pain that I could barely focus on my dad. He hadn't woken up since the blast, 
and his skin was rapidly scabbing over. My mother was despondent. She would not speak or even eat. Instead, she cast her eyes permanently in one direction, unable to stop staring. She gazed at the mushroom cloud, a shell-shocked grin over her face the entire time. I didn't know they could even stay this long, did you? I try not to look at it. I feel uncomfortable when I do. Focusing on Dad and helping out is better. I'm going to talk to the doctor tomorrow about her and Dad. I'll update you when I can. Be safe. You're in my thoughts always, sis. Hina-chan. Hanako. I hope you've managed to keep your spirits up since my last letter. Mother hasn't said much, but the news tell tells us they've rounded up more people for the internment camps. I hope you're not one of them. Though even if you replied, I doubt I'd be able to receive a reply right now. The yellow fog around us is growing thick. We haven't been able to see more than 30 feet in any direction, and I can't remember the last time we actually saw sunlight. The mushroom cloud still looming overhead, as if growing and collapsing all at once in some weird loop. I stared too long. It seemed like a cocoon with something shifting in the middle, but I knew, but I knew it was just the sickness and nothing more. I'm sorry to say that father still hasn't woken up. He's had seizures and diarrhea. <laughs> that was, they spelled diarrhea so wrong, but cannot be roused from sleep. He talks sometimes while he's dreaming and the scabs on his, bodies are, on his body are getting thicker with each passing day. I don't know what to do beyond keep him comfortable and trust the doctor. Mother isn't much better. As soon as she was able to speak again, she insisted that she saw things moving in the yellow fog. She wouldn't sit or sit stay on her own at any time, saying, they move when you don't look, they know we can't hear well, and they're hungry, so, so hungry, Hina-chan. Before rocking back and forth and praying to the mushroom cloud for guidance. What worries me most is that the other people have begun to pray with her. First, it was the fishmonger and his family, saying they could be saved this way. Then the tailor, and even the monks began praying with her, as she called out night and day for protection. A couple of nights ago, I must confess, I thought I saw something while I was tending father's bandages. He stirred in his sleep, and I was worried another fit was coming on. I moved from his bedside in one of the store aisles and ventured to the other side of the building to get something to ease him, taking care not to disturb anyone. I'm glad you, can s you can't see the horrors that are in this place, Hanako. People so burned they can't see, limbs falling off at the joint from rot and screams night and day. As I cleared to the other end of the building, I saw something perched on the derelict building in the distance. I thought it was a big stick insect to begin with. The body was long and thin, notches across its body as the tip ended in a small square head and antenna sprouted from the top. The long limbs dug into the side of the building and allowed it to stay almost perfectly still. But it was when I, I moved that I noticed something was amiss. And when I, it got closer, words failed to capture the feeling in my chest, but it ran to my toes so quickly that I bolted after one clear look at it. They weren't antennae. They were rotted, blackened arms. The body was flesh and the notches were deep scars. I couldn't see a head, but I did see matted black hair on the top, the limbs sprawling as it ventured closer and began to rear its head up. I dared not look, Hanako. I couldn't bear it, so I began to run back to father, hoping he would wake up and defend me again like he'd done before. However, when I got to his bed and turned back, no creature was in sight. I hadn't ingested my rations for the day, and I'd been working at father's bedside constantly, only taking breaks to check in on mother. I must have been exhausted, but I cannot shake it from my mind, and thought maybe you'd help me. Though admittedly, I just think I wanted to tell someone. There's nobody else here at my age, and it gets lonely. Father muttered something in his sleep as I was writing this first. Once I could understand it. Maybe he's on the road to recovery. The black rain, he said. Pray, th pray for them both, Hanoko. I will keep you in my thoughts, too. Hina. The rain came down today. At first, some of us were excited and hoped to clear out the lung clear our lungs. The Yamaguchis <laughs> ran out to collect some and feel it on our skin. But as soon as they did, 
I heard them screaming, steam rising from their skin as their flesh began to melt away, no blood or muscles exposed before the, thi before the thick black rain seeped in and encased itself over them. Their screams drowned out as it began to fill their lungs. A weak gurgle before their legs gave out from under them. They slumped to the dirt, kneeling their heads tilted up towards the sky as the black tar consumes their bodies, encasing them in a cocoon that gave off no sound, smell, or movement. It was horrific to watch, Hanoko. They seemed to just give up the hope the moment the world presented them with more pain and suffering. I cannot imagine what, how they must have felt. The cocoons were left alone by the townsfolk. Nobody wanted to go near them and feared they were not only a bad omen, but that they'd attract something worse. Our physician, Dr. Kanashiro, was concerned that noises in the distance were growing louder, maybe attracted by the screams of the Yamaguchis or the cocoons themselves. He advised we all close our doors, bar the windows, and let whatever else happens, happen. Mother disagreed with this. She considered the cocoons an offering to be made with the bright mother, and that if we didn't show our faces when her children came, we would invite more problems. Dr. Kanashiro prescribed her sedative and gave me stern instructions to keep her that way, lest she spread panic through the community as we recovered. He shook as he said it. Maybe he didn't want to explain why we'd had no outside visitors or contact for two weeks. Maybe he was scared of the looks he was attracting as the days went by, but I tried to do as he asked. Tried is the key word here, Hanoko. I wish I'd been able to help her and the townspeople, but they were already beyond any kind of help I could provide. I found them huddled in the back of the store, staring out a window and directly at more cocoons that had planted themselves in the ground ar around the road. I watched as they cracked open and new versions of Yamaguchi stepped out, their skin blackened and burnt, their eyes vacant with their expressions completely blank. They looked and moved in musion as they began to walk in perfect synchronicity back towards the store. They weren't the Yamaguchis anymore, Hanoko. I tried to get Mother's attention, but she practically didn't acknowledge me, nor did her complaints. As the days went by, they began to spend more and more time in the back of the store, or the abandoned butchers across the road, sneering glances at my father and myself before going back to their discussions. Mother refused to speak to me after another three days. I'm sorry to say that father succumbed to his injuries when we burned him with the others outside. Mother insisted on taking a piece of his skull for ikotsu, cremation of the bone remains in sh Shintoism, and would not pass it to any of us. Her eyes locked onto me, and I felt something I'd never experienced before. Danger. It's been three weeks since the flash. I'm managing to keep some food down, but I wish my hair would stop falling out. More than anything, though, I wish I could sleep. Hanoko. I know this may all seem strange to you, but there are things here I cannot understand and I don't wish to. I can hear a frantic chattering outside my sleeping area as if reciting something in the distance. Something begins to rhythmically click in response. I just want this to end. I just want my mother and father back. Hina. They came for me a while while I was asleep. I could hear the jubilation in their voices as they carried me to the back of the butcher's shop and set me down on my knees. The fire rising high behind the visit, visage of my mother stood over me. Visage of my mother stood over me. Her eyes wild and her smile the opposite of joyous. Manic would be the word I would use. The bright mother calls for you, young one, she said, her arms outstretched and her body shaking with anticipation. If we give you to her, we will be reborn in stronger, better bodies, worthy of the soil. I felt so many hands gripping into my skin, and I struggled to fight back, begging my mother to stop and asking her why she'd do this, telling her that she was the only family I had, that we had to stick together because that's what father wanted. She looked at me, her face a picture of disgust and Hanako. I knew in that moment what was wrong, even before she spoke, why the doctor had always looked at me so pitifully and how the community avoided speaking to me. Your mother died in that pit of a home you had. 
she fought free of your father to shield him, and in turn became nothing more than the dust you breathe. She hissed, her eyes widening as she took in a deep breath, her followers imitating her. What I am doesn't matter. You're a part of the journey, not the destination. I pulled at the arm closest to me and chunks of blackened skin ripped away, revealing pulsating, squirming pink flesh underneath, virtually smoking as it made contact with the open air. The owner screaming and pulling it back as it runs in the, into the road, pulling at the blackened flesh as the loosened, as others loosened their grip and watched with interest. He isn't ready yet, but no matter. We have lost so many. We are prepared to lose more, she said, turning her attention back to me. But I had already begun to run, my legs burning and joints clicking as I made a beeline for the town exit. All I was thinking about was survival. I had nothing else driving me but the desire to live to see another day. When the sun shone down on me, I see blank faces and swollen bodies staring at me as I keep running. Some reaching out feebly and screaming for water. I ignore them. Behind me, I hear the sounds of flesh splitting, guttural screeches, and malinformed voice of my mother calling to me. You have been chosen for the bright mother. You cannot avoid your destiny. I didn't answer. I didn't look back. I was so frightened, Hanoko. I kept on running until my feet gave out. I stumbled, and the next thing I knew, my body hit the water. The burning I felt was no pain I could ever truly describe, but it was as if someone was torching my body from the inside. The agony gave way to blackness, and when I awoke, I was in a nearby town being tended to. I tried to tell them what happened, Hanoko. Really, I did. But they just looked at me with such sympathy, shaking their heads and calling it point zero before continuing to treat me. I'd broken both of my legs and was told the radiation I suffered would take me before I was out of my youth, but that's not what matters now. I tried to go back, Hanoko, but I cannot get close. The entire town is completely and utterly leveled. I'm told the only thing still standing somehow is the Tory Gate. I don't know what I'm going to do next, but whatever I saw there, in there was not of this world. I don't know if it was just a case of time slowing down or just the sickness, but they tell me I was in there for no more than an hour. My home was so close to the point of explosion that there was nothing left in it. How I survived is practically unheard of. There's so much more I don't understand of this world, and much more I don't ever wish to uncover. But whatever was in that was in there, Hanoko. It was old. I think the blast woke it up and wanted to play it back, by any means necessary. Ima. Obasan never talked about her experiences after sending these letters to my family, refusing to acknowledge any of it for the rest of her days, deciding instead to leave it in all these pages. I can't help but worry about the contents of this letter, both on a historical level and on a personal one. Historically, Obasan was there on the day that she bore the mental and physical scars of being one of the millions of people to experience nuclear warfare on a mass scale for hopefully the last time. Personally, however, we come to a problem that confounds and scares me, something that's made me want to look at the jar I keep at home, something that makes me question why she was so fixated on the ring as she died. When she was found, Obasan was face down in the black rain, cu clutching a pile of ashes in her hands and refusing to let it go. But it wasn't her father's or her mother's. That simply wasn't possible. Because Obasan was an orphan. I don't get it. I am so sorry that you had to listen to that. Not the story. The well, constant... Like... <sighs> no, the, the story. It was... Wow. That was too long. Was I lost it like... You. Yeah. I lost you, man. I'm sorry. That was... <laughs> I mean, yeah, it seems was... like it might have been interesting, but I lost you. I yeah, it, I think that one was a little too long. But so, I think, I think at, I the start, get it. at the start, they were talking about a, uh, she was talking about, like, this black stuff that she would put in her hair to get rid of her whiteness, and then, and then she said that she thought back to the, to that jar, and then that she had ashes, so I think that, like, the ashes she would make her put in her hair. Mm. I don't know. Mm. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap it up yeah. for today's episode of the Real Talk Podcast. We will leave the links to all the stories we read in the, yes, in the description Yes, we will. Of the YouTube video. Uh, also, go follow our Twitter. That will also be linked in the description of the YouTube video. So, yeah. yeah. And go 
go subscribe to r slash no sleep because yeah good source thanks to cole Some for for coming on the podcast today yeah, and right, joining course. yeah yeah we'll see you guys next week all right later bye bye, bye. bye.